a seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive and this episode is part four removing the smoke box door plus the displacement lubricators boiler cladding and finally the cab while I've been working on this locomotive and I've mentioned it a few times all of the fixings have been over tightened so it came as no surprise that a simple job like removing the pin that holds the fire hole door onto the hinge was going to be difficult Normally, a firebox door pin is not tight at all. In the end, I had to use a mole wrench underneath the top of the pin and tap this with the copper-faced hammer to remove the pin. Now it's time to take out this crossbar that holds the smokebox door firmly to the smokebox. Surprisingly, this came out quite easily. There's a first time for everything. I haven't quite figured out how the blast pipe is mounted. There seems to be a steam union at the bottom, and I've slackened that off, but the pipe isn't pulling out, so I can only assume it is threaded lower down into the T-piece from the cylinders. I'll look at that in due course in another episode. What I currently need to do is remove the boiler cladding, and in this clip you can see me peering underneath the boiler, because I'm removing the boiler bands that secure the cladding to the boiler. The securing bolts that tighten the bands are underneath, but I need them on the top so I can get at them. I slacken them off slightly while they're underneath and then continue the job on the top. I really am getting a strong feeling that the builder of this engine had lost patience by this time. I've built two locomotives from scratch and repaired quite a lot of steam locomotives and stationary engines in my time. If you're a regular viewer of these videos, though, you will see that most of my repairs are rebuilds. And these days, I'm afraid my lifespan is definitely not going to be long enough to build another locomotive from scratch. As I've just said, they take a long time to make. And the best advice I can give to any beginner is do not be too ambitious. As a first attempt, pick something simple. The auction site that we all know and love is full of part-finished projects. And when I look at the state of some of them, it makes me shudder. What am I doing at the moment? Well, I'm removing one of the displacement lubricators. There's one of these at each side, and as per usual, I'm having to spanner the union nut all the way off. Why is that? Because it's been over-tightened and the threads are distorted. Thankfully, the fixing nut that holds the displacement lubricator to the bracket came off quite easily. With this out of the way... I can remove the cladding from this side of the boiler. There are, of course, two of these lubricators, so I set the camera around the other side, and here I'm doing exactly the same. And not unsurprisingly, I had to spanner the nut all the way off. But it's not all bad news. Just like on the other side, the nut that holds the displacement lubricator to the bracket came off very freely. And now that both of these displacement lubricators are safely in the box, I can actually remove the cladding. Here we go. Thankfully, the lagging does not appear to be asbestos. It's a modern equivalent. Once the job got to this stage, I thought that the cladding would just fall away, but it didn't. I had to manoeuvre it to remove it. A word of caution. When you're doing jobs like this, be aware that a lot of the parts are very sharp. Luckily, these parts weren't very sharp, so I didn't cut myself. And here they are with the piece of lagging, by my smart and brown lathe. I need to tidy up the workshop just to create some more space. You can see me here carrying the cab right round the other side and it's down by the Boxford lathe. It's really important to put these parts somewhere in the workshop where I'm not going to fall over them and the cab really can't stay in this position. This is the last piece of boiler banding to remove and this is the part that went around the firebox and luckily the bolts are not too long on this one. I'm definitely no boiler inspector, therefore not qualified to comment, but this boiler looks to be very well made. And it looks to me like the barrel has been turned on a lathe, or is it just the paintbrush marks? Unbolting this boiler from the chassis is going to be a real problem, and besides which, there is another major problem with it. I've enlarged this image to show you how the boiler is held to the frames, there is a bracket welded to the boiler, and this in turn is bolted to two pieces of steel angle, with four quarter-inch bolts. These pieces of steel angle 
are each held to the frames using just three 2BA bolts at each side. 2BA bolts are approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and I do not think they are strong enough for the job. But that's not the main problem. When a steam locomotive boiler gets hot, it expands and it gets longer. So you need an expansion joint at the back of the boiler. Many years ago I rebuilt a 5 inch gauge Johnson Midland Spinner locomotive and like this locomotive it did not have an expansion joint and when I used to steam this engine it pushed the smoke box forward a considerable amount. To make it easier I have removed all of the 2 BA bolts, 3 from each side. So when we lift the boiler the brackets will come off also but they will need to be unbolted from the boiler and left with me. I need to mill some slots in the brackets and make some special peg fittings to allow for the expansion of the boiler when it's hot. I couldn't really give a fixed price on this job. I did say I could get the engine to run and it would be X number of pounds. But now with the boiler problem and finding problems with no expansion joint and bad piping, it's going to take considerably longer to make this engine into something good. Working on miniature steam locomotives is very time consuming. I have spent over 15 hours working on this engine so far, and that is just to get it to the stage that you see here. The next job is to remove the wet header, the steam piping and the blast pipe, and then the smoke box, by which time the boiler should be just about ready to remove from the frames. The owner of the engine will be arriving on Tuesday to take the boiler away for testing. Then I will be doing some work on the rolling chassis to put it right mechanically. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.